Welcome to DXB Today. Tonight we're talking creatives, and there's a lot of them. So let's explain and show you what's happening in today's show. Louis heads down to meet MasterChef winner Dr. Saliha Ahmed at the Emirates Literature Festival for an exquisite brunch. Meanwhile, our Katie catches up with a few of the best-selling authors from around the world at the Lit Fest this year. Plus, we've got Hollywood model, actor and fitness trainer Sam Asghari right here in the studio. And to wrap it all up, vocalist Karim Mutraji is going to get us moving to his beats from our Al Sakal Avenue. But how about we talk about Sam again, guys? Yes. <laughs> I think we should just dedicate the entire episode to Sam Asghari. I mean, we are so excited to have him on the show. I've been following him uh, since uh, this morning, actually. And <laughs> um, he is something very, very nice jawline, I must yes. say. Yes. Well, no. well, well, this is it. I mean, look, look, we're, we're in the time now where uh, it's the event season in Dubai. Yeah. The weather's fantastic. Everyone's coming through. So you're obviously going to spot a lot of well-known faces around town. Yeah. And yes, Sam is one of the big ones. Yes. No, he's a, he's such a nice guy. I've actually been following him for quite, a, for quite a while and he's a good actor. And I think I'm very excited to have Middle Eastern representation out there in the world on the red carpets and in the movies. So that's good. And while we're talking movies, guys, have you been to Rio Palestine yet? No. Okay. I've heard. Palestinian Film Festival. Yeah, yeah, it's been yeah, going yeah. on for 10 years. I'm very proud. My bestie is actually one of the co-founders. Mm. But it is amazing. If you went to the Arts Fest, did you go to the El Kuz Arts Fest? I couldn't. <laughs> Lane, Lane and Guys, I have really been that's busy. So, that's your scene. Lane, I know, I, I know. I know. It. There's so it much was, happening now. It was unbelievable. <laughs> there were so many amazing local artists. There were so many amazing food vendors. There was so much Palestinian representation. And of course, the movies I saw documentary, not to be missed. It's still going on this weekend. So... That is my recommendation. Anything that you guys want to recommend? Palestinian food was there? Yeah, there's a bit of everything. Okay, cool. There's like, you know, nice. food, accessories, <laughs> all the creative arts. Wicked. Yeah. Nice. And it's always exciting to have celebrities come on the show. And the fact that they're coming to Dubai and choose this as a hub to meet the people and really socialize and promote their work, I think is fascinating. And we always love a little bit of celebrity interaction on the show. So I'm not mad at this at all. <laughs> Well, speaking of celebrities and the making of celebrities and all the content creators out there in the world as well, we've got a very interesting guest co-host who I want to learn a few things from today. Let's find out who it is. Hi, I'm Isa, the head of business development and client services at New Media Academy, and I can't wait to see you at the studio. Isa will join us in a little bit, but first we explore the festivities at the Emirates Literature Festival as we catch up with Louis to see what she has been up to. Today we delve into the culinary world with a winner of MasterChef UK 2017, Dr. Saliha Mahmoud Ahmed. Now this is her debut appearance in the UAE with her brunch with a MasterChef here at the Emirates Airline Festival of Literature. Join us as we explore her culinary journey and enjoy her delicious spread inspired by her best-selling cookbook, The Kitchen Prescription, that showcases how good food can be delicious and healthy. today with Dr. Saliha. Dr. Saliha, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure. Oh, I'm so interested in your story from being a doctor, a gastroenterologist in uh, the NHS, and then all of a sudden, the, the winner of MasterChef UK back in 2017. Could you tell us about that journey a little bit? It's a really interesting journey, actually. So I always take it back to my core interests and we had this yearbook at university where we wrote all of us what we thought we'd be doing in 10 years time and I said being a doctor in hospital and I'll probably have my own restaurant now I don't have my own restaurant but it shows that even from that very early time where MasterChef was nothing in my life I always had this inclination that I would do something with food in my life the next thing I knew, I'm in a studio in London doing an interview. The next thing I know, I'm actually on the show. The next thing I know, I've won. You know, so everything just kind of went from zero to 100 virtually overnight. I remember about a year back, I was watching some videos on YouTube and a video of you popped up talking about how people should not be eating less but eating more and you kept emphasizing eating more eating more I was like I need to meet this woman <laughs> please tell me more about this yeah absolutely I think 
Essentially, what studies have shown us is that the people who do restrictive diets really, really narrow down the amount that they're eating in an attempt to lose weight. Well, they might lose weight initially, but the overwhelming majority of those people actually regain weight over time. In contrast, if you have lots of diversity in your diet and eat lots of different types of food every day, foods from the plant kingdom, so nuts, grains, seeds, pulses, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, spices, the more of those things you can get into your diet, the better it is for your digestive health. And actually, the, probably the better it is for your uh, weight outcomes as well. So yes, I always tell people, the idea isn't to cut back and restrict. The idea is to add as much plant-based diversity in the diet as you possibly can. Now, I'm guessing this is something that we can find in your book, The Kitchen Prescription. Could you tell us a little bit more about the book and what inspired it? Yeah, I think The Kitchen Prescription for me was a way of getting people to understand the most up-to-date science about what healthy eating looks like and not selling it in a prescripted, this is healthy kind of way. It's about the joy of food. It's about the amazing recipes that cooking with the diversity of the ingredients can bring you. It's about color and life and energy. And it's the same sort of color, life and energy that your food gives your body as well. Now, as you know, we're here in the UAE and it's pretty much a salad bar of different cultures, right? So how would you intertwine food and culture, especially how did you show it off in this brunch of yours? This country, this place, Dubai, feels like an incredible melting pot. For a chef, it's heaven, because it means that you can get influences from every different part of the world in one place. But yes, I'm presenting my food today, but I'll probably take away a lot more than I give back, on, in honesty. Oh, I love that, and we are so excited to try out the Master Chef Brunch with Dr. Saliha. Thank you so very much for joining us. You're very welcome, pleasure's all mine. Such a delicious brunch, of course, brunch with a master chef at the Emirates Airlines Literature Festival. And I had such an insightful conversation as well with Dr. Saliha Mahmoud Ahmed. So stay tuned here for more of these flavorful experiences with food and culture only on DXV Today. Nice one, Louis. Food and literature, two of my favorite combinations. Now, our guest co-host for today is a visionary fostering content creation and opportunities through the New Media Academy. And he is on a mission to create authentic storytelling practices in the region. He is in training, inspiring creators through a world-class educational program. Please welcome Isa Fahihi to the show. Thank you, thank you Good so much. For, you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me and it's quite a pleasure to be around you guys and representing New Media Academy here with you guys. I mean, everybody was talking about that One Billion Summit, right? Were yeah. you there, Lane? I wasn't there, but I heard all about it. I was watching on social media, obviously. That's a shame. <laughs> Next time you have to be there. I know, I was us. working that day and I was so upset. I was having serious... Uh, uh, FOMO. FOMO, thank you. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Ash, were you having FOMO? Um, I didn't get a chance to be there, but then I want to know all about content creation. Because, I mean, there are three of us on this uh, panel right yeah, here. Yeah. Content creation seems to be an industry where it has become a little bit populated and almost a little bit clogged in, in, mm -hmm. in a sense. Um, what is your take on, you know, content creation in general and content creators, especially in this part of the world? Be nice. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's quite the future, if I might say. Uh, the estimate for the value of the creator's economy is at... 280 billion dollars can you imagine and it's estimated as well to to double by the next four to five years reaching to around 480 billion dollars so we're expecting governments um, private entities business entities individuals well even individuals who are passionate about social media content creation to all focus on this field so that's why we have launched this 1 billion follower summit and this year actually it's the second edition uh, we had over 7,000 attendees from which over 3,000 content creators and change makers if I might say they all gather together under one roof in one city and the 
the beauty about this summit is that the impact is not physically uh, um, only, but the impact goes around over 1.8 billion people following all these content creators and change makers. That's the beauty about the summit. And that's where I was. As, uh, unfortunately, I couldn't be in the physical space. Virtually, but, were but you? virtually, I was there that's for it. sure. Yeah. And it got a lot of government support from the Dubai government, right? Yes, thank you for mentioning that. This year, we were lucky enough that, that the country and the government um, we, it's not a sponsorship, but we could call it under the directives of His Highness and His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid. So you can't imagine the vibes down back uh, before the summit where the, the whole team got this surprise. Guys, this summit is under the directives of His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid. So knowing that we're working with the direction of the country, this is something amazing. I mean, I think the UAE is just always one step ahead, isn't it? With the talent that they, they nurture and how they, how they can see ahead in the future. They're always like one step ahead. But my question for you, Asa, is so many content creators out there, as Ash said, so much competition. Everyone wants to be involved somehow yeah. and become a creator, yeah. express yeah. themselves. You've obviously hosted a lot of workshops. You have That's it right. there. You're working with some of the best creators in the world. That's right. What are some of the talents or the skills that you see all of them have in common? Just one. Can I choose just one? Yeah. I'd say consistency, and I'll add one more, passion. If you see, if you have this consistency and this passion, this is your formula to be creative and to be successful at this field. That's it. And then, before that, what makes a content creator to stand out really is the knowledge. You see, you might have the charisma to, to present in front of a camera, but what makes you stand out is the knowledge. You speak from knowledge. Mm -hmm. So if you're well trained, that's why we always say content creation, especially at New Media Academy. We believe that content creation is not just standing in front <coughs> of the camera and presenting and memorizing your script and then you're, you're done. No, it's a full journey. Imagine that a teacher explaining a lesson to her students. So she needs to go through learning the subject planning for it, choosing the approach and the, the style of, sh of, of how she's going to deliver it to these students and then executing it. Mm -hmm. Similarly, content creation is the same thing. You have to learn your, your subject that you're going to focus on, learn how to script, what approach are you good at, and then execute it. So what are some of the, talking about the educational side, what are some of the programs that you have, the mm -hmm. educational programs at the New Media? Good. Academy? Let's say we are focusing on five primary cores. We're working on digital marketing and social media. We're working on professional social media management, uh, influencers marketing, um, again, government communications, and also we're focusing on a couple of short um, courses that gives you the skills of scripting, uh, writing, uh, presentation skills. How do you how do you get the confidence in front of the camera? You guys are doing a great job in front of these cameras. So content creators were more flexible, but it gives you another challenge. How can you be t uh, uh, like above the tip and always ready? Isa, I want to ask you and Dina and I, we are quite active in the content creation now. Mm -hmm side of things Good. and something that we've discussed as length is the fact that the algorithm yeah. seems to be a little bit strange or almost almost feels like it's against us it's starting uh, to feel a little bit is the word <laughs> yes, it's, it's almost starting to feel a little bit personal i feel like the algorithm doesn't like me uh -huh. this is something we've discussed uh, you know quite a bit with not just amongst us but in general mm -hmm. and this can be a little bit demotivating for us content creators mm. because you put in the time the effort the hours um and yet you don't always see the results. Why do you think that is? Or is it about also putting in the money? Are we expected to advertise and boost and have to, that's see, the thing, uh, I mean. I am a person who is against spending lots of money to, to get the fame and to go viral. If you have the correct formula and you learn, I'll get back to, I'll get back to her question and yours, of course. Uh, if you learn the formula, how this algorithm works, and at times you don't need to learn the algorithm. You know why? Because today the algorithm works this way. After a week or two, the algorithm changes. That's, that's the content creation field. It always changes, it's always evolving. So if you don't keep up with the trends, if you don't keep up with the learning programs and these things, you are not lost, but you are gonna be always behind. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, you're a content creator yourself. Uh, so yeah. how has it been for you? See, uh, I didn't start with social media. I come from not a traditional background. I come from real estate, you know, working with people, working with like 
products, villas, flats, not at all into media. But then when I saw the effect of social media, people are getting jobs out of social media. Yeah. People are getting lots of money. And how you can money. leverage that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so I believed in it. I tried it. I learned. I, uh, I acquired more knowledge. And then surprisingly, the social media has this magic over people that if you want to be a content creator, you don't want to lack knowledge. You don't want to be sitting and not knowing what you're doing. So it also encourages you to keep on learning and learning and learning about your subject. subject. Absolutely. I always say the side effects of being a content creator is the free hotel stays, the free clothes, <laughs> shoes, gym memberships and whatnot. I mean, that is a good way to make people hate us. <laughs> like that. Exactly. They hate us anyway, Dina. Uh, Isa, please, there's so much we want to talk to you about, so please stick around and we'll be with you shortly. Now let's get to know the artist featured on tonight's show. Let's have a look. Hi, this is Karim Motraje, a Lebanese Arabic singer, and I'm going to be performing Khidni Maak. Stay tuned till the end of the show to watch it. Coming up, we're talking to Dubai's quirky artist and storyteller about the vintage posters residents just can't get enough of, including me. Plus, from red carpets to TV shows to our very own studio, we've got a celebrity in the house. Wow! Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 